Shalom everyone, this is Amir Tsarfati and I am live from my office here in Galilee. Um, very, very big news today. It's a, a celebration here in Israel um, and uh, the countdown towards the Russian invasion had officially begun today and let me explain why? But before that, let me pray. Father, I thank you for your word. Thank you for your promises. Thank you for the prophecies that you reveal through your prophets. So we will be prepared and not scared. And now we ask that you will uh, lead this short update and uh, may be educational, informative, not sensational, and uh, uplift and encourage your people in Jesus' name. Amen. Shalom everyone, this is Amir Tsarfati. This is breaking news. Israel today signed historic uh, deal with Europe and it happened in Egypt because it's an Egyptian-Israeli deal with the European Union. We're talking about a huge deal to export gas to Europe all the way until 2050 certain amount, large, a large amount until 2030, and then smaller and smaller because we obviously have limited uh, uh, quantities that we have. In small, unless we find something new, we're going to start exporting less and less from 2030 to 2050. But this is huge. Israel has two ways to be able to export liquid natural gas because we get the gas in a gas, obviously gas form, so we need to liquidate it. So we have two options, either to have our own facilities where we liquidate the gas and then send it directly to Europe, or we can send it to Egypt that already has facilities for that, and then that will actually be exporting via Egypt. Egypt's uh, reservoirs are depleting. Egypt buys gas from Israel for its own consumption. So obviously, if Egypt is in the picture, it's not really Egyptian gas. It's Israeli gas that goes through Egypt. Why is it so important? And I've been saying that for the longest time, folks. Russia is the main exporter of gas to Europe. Their war with Ukraine caused the Europeans to take a step back and say, we do not want to rely on the Russian gas anymore. Now, for the first time, from being the country that is easy, always to blame, easy to accuse, easy to hit, hit and easy to come against, Israel is becoming a major player and an important ally of the Europeans, one that they cannot anymore underestimate and come against every opportunity they have. Ladies and gentlemen, Israel has officially became a, an energy superpower. We're no longer just exporting it to Jordan and to Egypt. We are now going to export to Europe, Western Europe. This is huge. That is the number one source of income of the Russian Federation. It's gas and oil. Israel officially is becoming the substitute for Russia in gas export to Europe. This is huge. The Russians understand that. The Russians don't like that. And uh, that's why I said, I began by saying officially the the uh, countdown towards a Russian invasion. Because remember, I've been teaching that for the longest time. Not me, by the way. <laughs> the prophet Ezekiel wrote that. I'm, I, I'm, I can only read it and teach from it, but it's not me. It's the, the prophet Ezekiel wrote that the war that is described in chapter 38 is a war about spoils of war, about someone coming to take, to steal, to, to, it's, a, it's a financial war. It's not about religion. It's not about Palestinian nationalism. It's not about all of that. It is about stealing, robbing, taking, 
And that is important that you understand that, folks. Officially today, we talked about it for the longest time. I've been updating you about the coming gas deal. Now, if you are not following me on Telegram, you probably hear it now for the first time. But on Telegram, I update all the time around the clock about the coming deal. And today the deal was signed in Cairo, in Egypt. So it's important. The president uh, of the European Union becomes now a great friend of Israel. You understand the EU was always in its roots anti-Israel. Always, always, always. For the first time, we become the darling of Europe. And remember, 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 it's from that part of Europe that the Antichrist eventually is going to rise. And so, folks, we're watching something very, very big. And I, 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 also, I also wanted you to know that um, uh, the uh, gas, um, it, it, it's, it's, it, look, under Netanyahu, Israel, wanted to uh, always, of course, extract the gas and sell it. Our new progressive liberal government of change, when they swore, when they were sworn in, they stopped the extraction of gas because that's the liberal mindset. It is in America, and uh, President Biden is now having to swallow his pride and frogs and go all the way to Saudi Arabia and and come exactly 180 degrees from what he declared before he was elected. He wanted to oust Saudi Arabia. He wanted to blame Mohammed bin Salman for killing uh, innocent people and for uh, doing all of these things. And, for, and next month, he's going to be the guest of Mohammed bin Salman. He's, he's going to be hosted by him. So you see the liberal progressive mindset is meeting with reality. And the reality is that there's a war in the Ukraine, the prices of energy soars, uh, and now everybody wants to do something about it. And reality, check. And then, of course, the Israeli government also decided it's time to reverse the decision to stop the gas extraction and now to re, uh, uh, re-extract it and, of course, open more and more um, um, contracts to new companies that will come like like Chevron and Shell and and uh, uh, we have of course Energian and others uh, that are already working even Lebanon that tried to extort the uh, the US and the international uh, community by claiming that we take gas from them realize this is a hoax this is not going to happen in the US envoy uh, did not hear any demand from where we are now extracting gas at the moment. So, ladies and gentlemen, even the Palestinians today said, hey, we need also to extract gas from the shores of Gaza. We want also to be part of this celebration. And if you thought that Russia left Syria to the Iranians, let me tell you another piece of information that only if you follow me on Telegram you know. And again, I cannot stress it more than what I already did. Get Telegram Messenger, find Amir Salfati, and and subscribe and follow me because you will get the news right on time without all the bias information from from, uh, the um, mainstream media. Now, let me explain. Remember on my last breaking news update, I told you that Israel striked the international airport in Damascus. And I also told you there was an extensive damage to the runways, to the control tower, uh, and to the, um, some of the uh, passengers' halls that were hosting the international, the uh, Iranian Revolutionary Guards for, you know, obviously smuggling weapons. But let me tell you what else happened. And you, you, you might understand the inner battles within Syria. Let me, let me explain. So one of the things that got hit was the radar, the radar in, um, um, in, inside uh, of that uh, airport for the incoming flight, outgoing flight. Therefore, the airport is not working right now. There's, the International Airport of Damascus is now shut down. There's no radar. You, you cannot direct 
airplanes to land or leave, even if the runways were okay, which they're not. So what happened is, it's a Russian-made radar. The Russians easily could fix it. But the Russians said, we will only fix it if you will let us have full control of the Damascus International Airport, which is, of course, against the interest of the Iranians. So you see the Syrians are hosting both Russians and Iranians. The Iranians are controlling the airport. They smuggle whatever they want. Israel put an end to it. Now the Russians are taking advantage of this situation and say, if you want us to fix your radar, we want control over this airport. Russia has no intention to leave Syria. Russia is reading the map. Russia understands there is gas in the Mediterranean. Gas, Russia understands that if they ever want to come against us, they need to be right here across our border. And so there's a lot of stuff that is going on, and I need you to understand. By the way, the um, uh, Saudi uh, air, uh, newspaper, Al Shark, well, there's a Saudi newspaper, and there's also another one, Al Shark Al Ausa, that comes out in London. And these are coming out with interesting stories uh, today. And again, on Telegram, I reported that. They are unveiling the Israeli special forces activity against Iranian smuggling of weapons to Hezbollah. Apparently, special forces of Israel are in Iraq, Syria, and on the border with Lebanon. And whenever we, we see convoys that are trying to smuggle weapon to the hands of Hezbollah, Israeli special forces are destroying it on the ground. That led the Iranians to say today that there are so many successful operations of Iran against Israel, but Israel is not revealing anything. The Iranians are so desperate to show that they do something because they don't. Look, today there was some sort of a leak from a ammonium uh, um, container in an ice cream factory. One woman was slightly uh, wounded by inhaling it. Local ice cream factory, one woman. The Iranians reported that they managed to hit um, a, some chemical plant in Israel and hundreds of people are affected by it. Look what they do. They take one item, which has no effect on anyone besides one person, and they, to their own people, they show if they, as if they did something. They have to show, they have to save face, because for the last three weeks, we have eliminated at least four key people in the Iranian Revolutionary Guards Corps, uh, and they know that. And they know that, and they don't know what to do. One of the things that the Iranians are trying to do right now as a revenge is kidnap and kill Israeli tourists that are right now in Istanbul. There are, you know, Turkey is an hour and a half away from us. Turkey is very inexpensive, great hotels, great markets, inexpensive products. So a lot of Israelis go there. It's very popular. There are more flights between Istanbul and Tel Aviv than any other destination uh, on our flight uh, schedule. And uh, as of two weeks ago, the Israeli Mossad managed to uh, find a, an Iranian terror cell that was about to kidnap Israelis and kill them. We alerted the Turks. They immediately arrested them. And there's a lot of other cell groups all across Istanbul and in other uh, places in Turkey. And the Sultan Erdogan is not happy. You know, Iran can do whatever Iran wants to do in Lebanon, in Syria, maybe in Yemen and Libya. But they cannot do that on, on Turkish soil. That really embarrasses the Sultan, who wants to have now good relations with Israel in light of our status as an energy superpower. So you have to understand, folks, there's a lot of stuff going on. Iran is desperate to do something to Israel. But there is a lot of respect, anger, fear, and suspicions right now, as Israel is now signing a major deal with Europe. And again, the breaking news as of a couple hours ago, Israel signed a major deal to export gas to Europe and thus is now becoming a replacement to the Russian gas. 
And that is, of course, the beginning of the countdown of the Russia, to the Russian invasion, as Ezekiel described. So I'm telling you all of that, folks, because um, it's important that you understand that we are dealing with an amazing, amazing development right now that all of you should pay attention. Again, please go download Telegram, find Amir Salafati. I've got 271,000 subscribers. Go follow. There's so much. I cannot even say all of those things here. There's so much that I report. I tried to cover the most important th uh, things right now, and I want you to share it with as many people as you can. But that's it. Now we've got about 90 young adults from 15 different countries that are uh, approaching the latter part of the tour. We've seen salvations. We've seen amazing life transformations. But we also have seen a lot of the enemy attacking us uh, with uh, illness and uh, injuries and stuff like that. And we really could use a lot of your prayers. So this tour will end up well. And uh, the name of God will, of course, be not only honored and proclaimed, but also um, as they get back home, they will be great ambassadors of Christ. Look, thank you again for listening. Please forward this to as many as you can. Download Telegram Messenger and, uh, and watch this. And again, I get tons of messages. I want to share with you only one uh, that I received today. Look, uh, listen about revealing revelation. L listen to this. I just want to share something cool that happened. After buying and loving Revealing Revelation, I recommended it to my library to get the ebook. I see that they did, and it actually shows that now they have 98 copies of it. I've never seen them have more than three for any book. I hope they all get re uh, re read and the gospel message is spread to every corner of my city. The same person wrote just. Another person, excuse me, bro, just as a comment, I pre-ordered Re Revealing Revelation and and devoured it and began taking about it in our ladies, uh, uh, talking about it in our ladies study group. Huge interest to, uh, as so they asked me to lead a Bible study using your tour book or your workbook. And we started today and had 19 ladies. And usually we have about six. Look. I get these every day. Amazing book. Finally, people get it. And it's very encouraging to the not to the believers. And it should worry non-believers. But Christians shouldn't worry. You have to understand, anyone that tells you that you should worry about something is trying to sell you fear. Christians should not worry. We know where we go. We know that we have eternal life. We've been warned about everything that we see around us right now. This should Encourage us that our days are numbered here and that our rapture is soon around the corner. Stay encouraged. Whenever we hear about these things, the Bible says encourage one another with these words. Stay encouraged, not discouraged. Stay hopeful, not hopeless. And stop worrying. I, I just posted a list of verses of how we are asked in order not to worry. You know, there's a lot of things going on, but one thing is for sure, the whole world is watching us and the way we react to world events. We better be someone with hope and the joy of the Lord and uh, the amazing, amazing, amazing uh, hope of our salvation. Okay, so please spread this uh, breaking news. Amazing, amazing, amazing uh, historic day as Israel is now becoming Israel. We survived the Holocaust, the European Holocaust. God, as Ezekiel 37 said, took us out of that graveyard, placed us on our own soil. And today, listen to me, I want to scream that. I want to open the window here and scream that everybody here. Today, we export gas so Europe will not freeze in the next winter. Can you imagine that? Unbelievable. Spread these good news. Thank you. God bless you. And shalom from Galilee. And again, uh, go to Telegram and follow me there. Okay? God bless you. And shalom. Bye-bye.